So uh, I got something from Porter Stansberry, and, uh, and, and I want you to listen to this. A year ago, we published a dire warning about a mega-cap American, American stock. This was the only mega-cap stock we told investors to avoid. It's no ordinary business. It's America's most strategically important country, a company. Listen to that. America's most strategically important company. We said it would soon collapse. On January 27th, 2023, the headline was coming soon, the Boeing collapse. How did we know? Well, for the last 20 years, there hasn't been a company in America that has embraced more bad ideas from financial engineering to ESG than Boeing. In 1997, Boeing merged with fellow aerospace manufacturer McDonnell Douglas in a $13 billion stock swap. It was a match made in hell. Boeing was known for quality. McDonald was known for financial engineering with a focus on cost-cutting and the company's share price. Although the Boeing name survived, it was McDonnell Douglas's attitude that prevailed. McDonald's CEO, Harry uh, Stonecipher, who took over the day-to-day operations at Boeing, immediately took a carving knife to Boeing's highly paid engineering staff. In May uh, 2001, Boeing management made a physical break with its engineers. Manufacturing headquarters stayed in Seattle while corporate moved to downtown Chicago, 1,700 miles away. That split symbolized the growing distance between the builders and the bosses. To say the company's engineers were disenfranchised doesn't describe it. Boeing's entire culture was erased. CEO Stonecipher uh, even bragged about what he had destroyed. Quote, when people say I changed the culture of Boeing, that was the intent. So that's like a, a business. It's run like a business rather than a great engineering firm. I don't know if you know this, but making airplanes fly really requires a great engineering firm, but maybe that's just me. Today, both Boeing CFO Brian West and CEO David Calhoun are are formerly senior GE finance people, and they've done to Boeing what they did to uh, to GE, destroy the balance sheet. From 2010 to 2019, Boeing spent $44 billion on buying back its own shares while adding $50 billion in debt. This reduced the share count by 23% and sent the stock price up 200. But the underlying business? Bean counters cannot build airplanes. Boeing's planes began falling out of the sky. As a result, free cash flow plunged to negative 4.3 billion annually by 2019. Today's bankruptcy of Boeing grows more certain. Cumulative net income over the last three years is negative $20 billion, and the company has $52 billion now in total debt. Interest expense is currently $2.5 billion a year, but that's going to move much higher as Boeing's debt will be downgraded to junk. But never fear. Investors have nothing to worry about with one of America's greatest and most important companies spiraling towards bankruptcy. Stephanie Pope is the chief operating officer of Boeing. She holds a bachelor's degree in accounting from Southwest Missouri State University and an MBA from another intellectual powerhouse, Lindenwood University. She also has zero engineering background. Now, why would someone with this kind of background be placed in charge of operations in the world's leading aerospace engineering firm? Well, maybe it's because she is the executive sponsor of Boeing's Women Inspiring Leadership, a group dedicated to increasing gender diversity awareness. Boeing's planes keep falling apart. These outcomes are the results of years and years of bad ideas, starting with the intentional destruction of Boeing's engineering culture followed by the GE-style financial engineering, and now the company's full embrace of modern Marxism ESG. Like we predicted a year ago, Boeing is going to collapse. When the debt gets downgraded, the stock will drop by more than 50% to below $100, and that's just what we warned about GE and GM. 
Boeing is a wonderful metaphor for our entire society. When, now listen carefully, boys and girls, when we promote people because of their political views or their race or their sex, even if that sex is completely made up, instead of what they know and who they are, the content of their character, we will continue to have planes fall out of the sky. Whatever company is involved in all of this stuff, their, quote, planes, whatever it is they build, will fall out of the sky. Until our government gets away from this craziness, America's republic will fall out of the sky. Let me just give you a couple of things. First of all, do you think that's a good idea? The NIH has spent millions on equity, LGBT issues, instead of researching cures. How do you think that's going to work out for us? DEI, the boondoggle, cost us millions. And yet, in all of these all, without all of these universities, all of these company, uh, countries, uh, sorry, companies that are embracing DEI, University of Michigan is paying probably a total of about $80 million a year for their 142 employees to promote DEI and all the programs. Okay? So how's it working out? $85 million was spent on DEI at that one University. Black students' experience on campus hasn't improved. Hispanic and Asian enrollments increased, but black enrollment dropped slightly from 4.3 to 3.9. With percentage of students who were satisfied with the overall campus climate, it decreased 72% to 61%. Your education plane is about to fall out of the sky. How about energy? Let's all go EV. And in fact, let's have a government that thinks they know better, thinks that they are God. And so they're going to reduce the oil that we can pump, starve us for anything that we know historically works, to give us a bunch of crap that doesn't work, that we still have to have the energy to propel. We still have to make electricity so the car can plug in. Where's that coming from, gang? Oh, don't worry about it. These cars are so great. Really? Did you hear? I think it's Hertz is getting rid of all of their EVs. They're turning in their entire fleet. And that's happening over and over and over again. Meanwhile, hey, let's be more like Europe. Let's be more enlightened like France. France is dropping its renewable targets to fully embrace nuclear energy. Why? So they have energy sovereignty. Sovereignty? How dare France separate itself from the collective? And meanwhile, on MSNBC, Chris Matthews on Wednesday claimed that, and I'm quoting, rural Americans are essentially members of a cult who will vote in, quote, their craziness if Democrats don't show up at the polls. Our craziness. Our craziness. I, I've had enough. I've really had enough. What is our craziness, Chris, that we want to vote in? For instance, uh, how about... The president actually has to go to Congress to ask if, hey, can we get into another war? That's, that's not Republican craziness. That currently is Democratic craziness as we are now backing into a war in the Middle East. Another one. Is that crazy to ask? Is it our love for history and heritage that's so crazy? The mission statement in our Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal? That we don't believe that to be anti-racist, you must indeed be racist? To do the opposite of what Martin Luther King preached? 
No, I don't think that's crazy. I think that's settled science. Are we crazy for demanding that our border be shut down until we can get control? Do, is it crazy to say 10 million new people have come across our border? We don't know who they are. They're, we're building shanty towns. Our kids are being kicked out of their own schools so we can put illegals in a nice home because we're out of hotels. Is that crazy? Is that crazy? We don't even know who's in our country, Chris. Mark my words, the, the intelligence offices in the United States have just come out with a warning. They said that Hezbollah, Hamas, they have a probably some operatives here in the United States. Oh, do you think so? So does every country that hates us. They're lining up at the border and we let them through. And boy, it's really crazy to ask why the Biden administration said, oh, if they're from China, pretty much just let them through. Did we learn nothing from 9-11 or did I just dream that up in a crazy fever dream, Chris? Is it crazy to insist the Constitution be followed and the Bill of Rights? That maybe we don't have secret courts, maybe we're not spied on, that our CIA and other intelligence agencies don't conduct cognitive operations, quote unquote, on our fellow citizens? Is it crazy to say we need to be energy energy independent at a time when oil tankers are being hijacked by Iran? When whole fleets of electric cars are being sold and the old combustion engine is back because the tech isn't there? Is it too much to ask in a country like ours to allow the citizens of the country, a republic, to make their own decisions on what they buy, what they eat, what medicine they inject in their own bodies? Is it really all that crazy to demand that the government rein in spending when we're at $34 trillion in debt and our deficit, just our deficit in December alone, was 50% higher than they said it would be. Is it really crazy to question authority when that authority has lied to you about serious issues, too too many to even, even count? Corruption at the highest levels, Laptop, Russia, Clinton servers, January 6th, Ray Epps, ESG, collusion with big tech to silence and censor those that do question. Is it really? Is that really crazy, Chris? Because to me, it doesn't sound all that crazy. How about some accountability? It's so crazy to ask for some answers on what happened in Afghanistan losing at least a billion dollars now just reported of our hard-earned money in Ukraine. And dare I say the lab leak, our role in that, as well as all the lies from the government and the companies like Pfizer and Fauci. It isn't crazy for those of us who actually believe in the Constitution. For those of us who actually believe in the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights and the rule of law not to be dismissed, demonized, called traitors, insurrectionists, or crazy. And Chris, until you and your elitist leftist friends who despise half the country, the half that actually works hard, plays by the rule, pays their taxes, fight and dies in our country's war, stop acting like all of your new ideas, like a hundred plus genders, teaching of history that destroys the actual truth until you abandon your elitist attitude that we're all rubes and only you know better, well, I guess we'll continue to be crazy in your eyes. But in ours, it is your indeed clinical mental illness that is the real danger to freedom, democracy, or dare I say it, the republic. 